So without really trying to make any leaks or anything, but I think it's pretty interesting how Liquid continues to place behind Secret at TI, but players from Secret continue to leave to Liquid. <laughs> so I don't know what else, you know, Secret has to do for players not to leave. Like, I don't know. Johan, what do you think? I don't know. It's one of those, you know, it's it's hard. Like like a TI, it's it's a team breaking tournament. And I think like even this thing of gaming gladiators bootcamp going swimmingly for I don't know how long it was in total, but probably went much better for longer than it did worse. And then some bad things happen just one day, one moment, one hour in one day, like and, and now you have such a big problem that if you don't change it, uh, the team is going to have to change. Dota is quite intense like this. Uh, like this tournament is a project, I think, for most that people want to overcome, solve, get on top of, be better than the rest. And <clears throat> when something goes wrong in this like project, the quest to, to get to the top or how you get there, it starts getting on people's minds it starts getting on the nerves it starts becoming like a really big thing and yeah quite often you have you just have these very short moments or or things that lead up to i cannot do this for another year or i stop believing or too much trust was broken or i don't see the world the same way um and i don't think it's a bad thing quite on the contrary i used to have a really hard time facing this uh i also do think you shouldn't jump the gun on it but at the same time, I think it's sometimes just what has to happen. It even has to happen for both parties. You know, like if, if it's one person leaving a group or two people leaving a group, I, I think quite often it's, it's just when you see the big picture, the bigger picture, it's part of the growth for both, you know? Um, yeah, like, I mean, I think the old team secret roster was a good example of that. Like a lot of these guys played together at this moment, then Ta got kicked, I got kicked. Eventually, some of these guys played together again. I played with S4 again later. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Life is life doesn't end in that one hour during one day during the boot camp for TI or, or that one official playoff game. Like, life doesn't end there. The world doesn't stop turning. And when you see that, when you start, like, taking it in, I think you can see it can be good for all parties involved, you know? It's just a natural process. Uh, so the same thing for Secret players who jump ship or or whatever you know like and yeah I'm, poppy keeps having ways to enable his his players i also think maybe he got used to it uh maybe it's just good practice and and it's how things are supposed to be i believe it china is not gonna win again unfortunately i mean have you seen the news that all the, like so many players retire so you know uh, faith beyond retires and why i think retires and now ame is retiring I don't know if they're like for sure, but like they're they're not playing. I think that I everybody... mean, yeah, but Somnus is still playing. <laughs> Somnus doesn't want to go anywhere until he wins. I mean, it made me a bit sad to honestly when Somnus announced his retirement because I he was know. like one of my one of my favorite mid laners. Like he's super good. Also, he's one of the best for sure. I was so sad when Howe retired, but he ain't never coming back. He never came back. That was so sad. You remember how? Tang Fu how? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, dude, that guy was a legend. <laughs> he was MVP carry player. I fear. remember his life, his life stealer. That was the life stealer games. Uh, it was awesome to watch, but he never came back. No, he never came back. I mean, I think he was in one of the skids for TI nine or something like this. I don't know. I saw him like, yeah, they did some skid from China, but other than this, I don't think I've seen him at all. Yeah. So then I want to ask you about, Boom, about your time in Gaming Gladiators. So we had Celery on the podcast and he was really cool. And I got to meet. Uh, I have to ask also as well about Immortal Faith. When you told me that you didn't want my fries and then you ate half of my fries, I'm going to get you this game. You lost my <laughs> lane <laughs> back in December. And I'm here winning Guantia and then another one oh right after. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I have to ask also as well about Immortal Faith, because Immortal Faith, from what I've heard right. outside, you know, was a big part of your process or how you saw the game. Now he's going to Nigma as well. He yes. also is making a change after a long time. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think he was, he was like the, hmm, not sure how to say it, but uh, I felt like without him, 
we wouldn't have become like anywhere close to how good we've become as a team. Like I think he is really good at bringing people together and bringing people to like uh, play on one idea or like just having concepts. You know, everyone has the same concept and uh, everyone knows what's happening. Like having one plan and everyone has the same plan and the same idea on what what has to happen in the game. You know, for you to win. And uh, yeah, I think he was a very big part of of our success as a team. And I wish him the best of luck. You know, we're pretty good friends with him. Uh, and yeah, I think he will make. I mean, he can make Nigma uh, a competitive team again if uh, the Nigma players are, you know, willing to listen to him and and learn from him. Ah, big words. That's really cool to hear. Uh, I don't know much about him, so it sounds like he he was trying to work on some of the team stuff, perhaps, or he was like trying to, yeah, like make a team more of a team. And not just bring like one Dota thing or, or or trying to bring his own thing, but to make sure that you guys were actually just playing together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was also doing like 90% of our drafting. Like ah. uh, he would prepare the draft, he would prepare bans against the, the enemy team and and we would just like during the draft, we would just give like suggestions on our heroes or whatever, but he would be doing like pretty much all of it. So you know that Immortal Faith now is going to, to Nigma and... How do you think he's going to be able to transform it? You think that he's going to be able to bring the passion that maybe he was lacking, or I mean, you've you dealt, you've been with him for so long, you know. You think he's going to do good in Nigma? Uh, whew. I think he get, like he always wants to be the best. Like uh, he's he's always doing whatever he can to to be the best, and I think he can give them good ideas about the game. And and if he ends up drafting for them, I'm not sure who will draft for them. I didn't talk to him about it, but. Uh, yeah, I think they will. I think they will most most likely do better than they've been doing. You know. Okay, and I wanted to ask you also, both of you, Johan and, and Boom, about the news that came from TSM. So uh, Moon is not going to be playing this year. He's going to be yeah, coaching. Going to be head coach. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. He, I talked to him a little bit. I mean, we will probably bring him into another episode. So I don't want to spoil it. But he was telling me that he feels that the draft is so important right now, and some of the other things that dedicating a person full time to that. Could be extremely valuable how do you guys feel about that i think he is doing a really good thing i think what we just mentioned before about like authority and coaching i think you can give a lot of authority to a coach if it's the right fit if it's the right coach and i think moon is is the right like i, I think he fits the the bill so I, I think it's a very smart move or like a very wise move to to go for it if you believe you have also the the players to to execute your your vision so I, I think it's very cool. I'm excited to see. I, I believe he's the right guy for the job. Yeah, I'm also excited to see. I think it's a very cool idea to have someone full time doing doing a head coach, you know. I think I think a lot of teams should should have a guy like that to like prepare everything, prepare you. It's your the future, baby. For, for the games, yeah. I think so too. 